QuickBooks Online 2021, pay sales tax. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We're gonna be opening up a new tab to open up the trial balance. So I'm gonna go up top, right click on the tab up top, duplicate that tab to open up then the trial balance, which is gonna be found then on the left-hand side in the reports. I'm gonna type up top, to uh, find the trusty TB trial balance, typing into the find screen, trial balance, trial balance, and there we have it. Scrolling back up top, we're going to be range changing, ending at 1231.21. Run that report, close up the hamburger up top, hold down control, scroll up just a bit to get to that 125%. Then we're going to go back on over to the first tab. We're considering the payment of the sales tax. So let's just kind of recap the sales tax here and consider the payment process of it. So remember, sales tax is not something that we have to charge. We're not, I mean, we're not the ones that are basically setting the sales tax. We're being used by the government to be their collection agency. So we, So how does that work? Well, we have to set up the sales tax. So just recap that holding control, scrolling down just a bit. We set up the sales tax in the taxes tab on the left hand side sales tax is going to be up top and then we would set up our sales tax depending on the location which could which could result in multiple sales tax areas in the sales tax settings so if i go to the sales tax settings here's the agency that we set up this is the one this is the agency for us and for the us it's going to be state and local agencies who are the ones that are coercing us to be their tax collectors and you know pay them the tax. So then once that's going to be set up, the question is, well, who do we have to then uh, pay the taxes on or what types of things are subject to sales tax? For that, we're going to go then to the sales items on the left-hand side. We go to the products and services. And when we set up our items, we decided the items that were being taxable. Typically, those items being non-service items, service items in the U.S., often not subject to sales tax. Inventory items that are to end users and customers are the items that are often subject to sales tax. So when we set these items up, say like a guitar inventory item, editing that inventory item, we said that it was a taxable inventory item. Then every time we make a sale that has an inventory item that would be taxable, we would typically have to collect sales tax that would be over and above our sales price and, uh, and, then, and then charge the sales tax. Now, there could be an exception if you had a customer that uh, was not subject to sales tax, even though the inventory item typically is, but that's kind of ex an exception to the rule. So that means that if I go back then over to our, our second tab and I look at the sales tax payable, this is where they're putting the sales tax. Now, if I go into any of these items, then we're going to see it's created from the sales uh, receipts and invoices. If I go into one of the sales receipts, or in this case, an invoice, then we could just break down how the sales tax is being adjusted. In this case, we charged $380, but then the state said, hey, you know, we're going we're gonna to tax the customer not us, we, in theory, the, the business owner are not paying the sales tax, the customer is. We're just the one that's being used as the a collection agency. So we only charge 380, but we, we were forced to charge 399, including the sales tax. And that means that what happens when we record this, accounts receivable goes up by the full amount, 399. Sales only goes up by the 380. We're not going to record on our sales in our revenue on the income statement, the full amount. We're not including the sales tax on our income statement because it's not really what we charged. We were just forced to collect it on someone else's behalf. And that's going to be the 19, right? They said, hey, if you want the protection in this town, you better pay us your sales tax. That's going to be 5%. So we said, okay, that's not going to go on the income statement. We're going to put that on the balance sheet because it's not really our items. Then we're going to have to collect this sales tax over time and then pay it at a future time. Now, when do we actually pay it? It will depend on the location by location, meaning uh, oftentimes it will, different states will have different amounts or different time periods that you'd have to go by because once again, it's a state and local tax and not a federal tax typically in uh, the U.S. But normally, the more sales tax you have, the more often you're going to have to pay possibly monthly or quarterly or yearly. So we're gonna imagine that we gotta pay this then on a monthly basis for our practice problem. We're gonna be thinking like a generic practice problem, even though we set it up in kind of California, but because it's a, it's just a general problem here, we're gonna make it kind of generic. And so we then have all the sales tax that we have, 
have uh, uh, collected here. We're looking for the sales tax that ends in January, the sales tax right here. And so that totals up to the 1,697.70 that we would then have to pay in February. And then of course, all the sales that we make in February, we would then have to pay in March. That's how we're gonna set up our payment schedule. So scrolling back up top, I'm gonna to go back then to the trial balance, go back then to the first tab. Then let's go down to the taxes down below. Now we could run some reports for the taxes. So if I ran some reports up top and said, I wanna take a look at say the uh, tax liability report, then it's gonna generate our sales tax report. And what we really want is the liability report for January. So I'm gonna say 010121 to 123121. Let's run that report. And this will basically give us uh, the sales tax that we need for that time frame. The total being the 198570. If I go back to the trial balance, just to double check it over here, and we go to the sales tax here, which uh, we got the 198570. If I go back over here, we've got the one, let's run this report and let's make it as of the end period 013121, then run this report. Now we've got the 169770. Now let's go back to the, to the uh, trial balance. Let's open the sales tax. And as of the end of January numbers down here, we're going to say right there, we got the 169770. So that's what you would expect then to pay because that's what we collected on in January. So I'm going to go back on over. That looks good. So I'm going to go back to uh, the sales item down below. Let's go back to the taxes tab because now they took us over to the reports tab. And then if I was to pay this in real time now, then it would give us a little widget down here that would help us with the process of paying. But because we're in a practice problem, we can't really use the little widget because it depends on being basically in real time. So we could set our range up top and then set our payment schedule. And if I view this item here, then we can go through our payment process for the amount that would, uh, would be due. And so again, we can't really do it for a practice problem because this thing works basically in real time but it would be calculating the, the gross sales, the taxable sales, and then give you your tax calculation, which should come out to the same number if we were in real time. And then over here, we have file your sales taxes. So print the tax form for the state's website and fill, uh, fill it out. You can go to the link for the, some of the state information there. Then you gotta write a check to your agency or print one. That means the actual payment that we're gonna be making. Mail the form and check to your agency. So that's how we're gonna process will work to pay them. You're gonna to have to actually fill out, of course, the sales tax form and then pay them whatever the form looks like, whatever the requirements are, whenever the requirements are that you have to pay them. In our case, the month after uh, the sales took place and we'll do it on a monthly basis. When you're done, come back and record the payment in QuickBooks. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's close this out. Before I do that, then of course you would record the payment here, right? So we can record the payment within QuickBooks. But again, I'm just going to write a normal check for it since uh, we can't use this process ideally because we're not in real time. So I'm going to close this out and just say we're just going to simply write a check or an expense type form for it. So I'm going to hit the plus button up top. I'm just going to make an expense type of form. And you don't want to, you really do want to use their little widget character for sales tax. But again, because it's a practice problem, we'll, we'll do it in this format. And this is going to go to our state agency. So we need the state agency that we are selling to. Let's see if uh, Cal. So I don't think I'm going to go back to this report and just say the person we're paying is actually this whole thing here. So I'm going to say California Department and so on for the name. I'll set that up as a new vendor. So administration federal administration i'll get rid of the payable i'll add that i'm going to say it's going to be a vendor that we're going to be paying and we'll pay this on let's say the 28th so i'm going to say plus 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 to the 28th payment we're going to say this is going to be i'll say an electronic type of payment and then i'm going to say that the other side the category that it will be going to is going to be the sales tax payable which is that name again so let's see if we could find the liability account with that big name, California Department of Tax Fees and whatnot. And then we're gonna be paying the amount of, I'm gonna to go to the end of January in this report. The amount at the end of January was 169770. So it's gonna be 
1697.70. We're not going to make it a billable item or taxable. And so that looks good. So this is going to decrease the checking account, the other side decreasing then the liability. Saving and closing. It says something's wrong. So you have either a tax liability account or a transaction where it's not allowed or haven't specified it. So they won't let me post to the to the liability account directly because they want me to use their little widget thing to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another liability account to net it out uh, so we don't have to use their widget. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call this sales tax payable. Uh, let's make it, let's do it this way. California depart. And I'll just start there and then I'm going to say sales tax payable. That way it'll be right underneath. Hopefully the, the account will be right next to each other. I'm going to set it up. It's going to be an other current liability type of account. Other current liability type of account. Sales tax. That's what we want. I'm going to save it and close it. And then we'll put this in there as of the 1697.70. I'm going to remove the amount above. And so there we have it. Now let's try it out. Save it and close it. Will that be okay, QuickBooks? Does that work? And then go to the next tab. Scroll back up top. I'm going to go back to the summary. And then let's say we run the report again. Hold down control. Scroll up just a bit. We're going to go down to the liability section. And there's the two that are netted out. All right. So there's the 198570. And then we're netting that out against what was paid. So the net of the two is going to be our sales tax payable. Uh, that is still due and the amount that's still due of course is the amount that's in there for February that's still outstanding so in other words if I scroll back down we basically paid off this amount and then the sum of these items is what will still be left in there for February or in other words if I go back the net bit of these two is what is still outstanding uh, for sales tax that was collected in February that will then be pay paid in March so this is where we stand at this point in time with regards to the uh, trial balance. We'll be printing out the trial balance at the end of each presentation so you could check it out on your own time.